Hi, my name's Edward, I'm an alcoholic. When I came into the rooms, I knew I was ready. Yes, the first step. My life was unmanageable because I was addicted to alcohol and drugs. The second step, yes, I was willing to turn my life over to a loving higher power. I went through all the steps that I saw up on the wall and said yes, yes, yes to all of them until I got to the eighth and particularly the ninth step and it froze me. I was terrified. I thought getting sober meant you could just hit the restart button in your life, put your past behind you. Um, but I saw that the ninth step particularly m required of me that I make, s I make personal amends to the people I had hurt. And I thought that's going to be impossible. First of all, there's so many of them. And secondly, it just scared the heck out of me to have to go and confront these people about the wrongs I had done. So after I was sober for a while and I had a good solid old school sponsor in my life, he led me through the ninth step. And one of the things he said to me that was important was I should journal the ninth step. I should, I should write down the whole process I was about to go through and I wouldn't be so intimidated by it. And in fact, he had nine steps within the ninth step that I was to follow. I'm gonna go through them real quick because maybe they'll help you if you had the same problem I did with being so scared of making these amends. So, the first thing my sponsor wanted me to do was make the list, which is what we'd done in the eighth step, the list of all of the people to whom I owed an amend. And so I did, I transferred that into my, my ninth step journal. The second thing he wanted me to do was identify specifically the nature of the amend. And he, he had a saying, he said, we have to be specific about being specific. And he was right, he wanted me to really identify the act. Was it an act of dishonesty? Was it an act of theft? Was it an act of unfaithfulness? He wanted me to be very, very clear about what the amend was about. The third step within the ninth step that my sponsor wanted me to journal about was to identify that act and connect it to a character defect that he and I had gone through in our earlier step work. And that was really valuable to see how those two things, the act itself and then the character defect that it attached to, um, was very, very important. And I, and I spent a long time writing down my thoughts about that about each person and the, the nature of the act and the character defect in me that it attached to. The fourth thing uh, he wanted me to consider and to write about was honesty. Why was I making this amend? Now he was clear that you make an amend for yourself. The other person, what the other person thinks doesn't matter. He said to me that the other person says, I don't care what you say you're sorry for. I want you to get out of my office or get out of my ho home. That was none of your business. You were to make the amend as honestly as you could uh, for the benefit of freeing yourself from the burden of needing to make that amend. And he was, he was very clear and very hard on me about why I was making Was I making the amend to re reignite a, a, a business uh, relationship that had gone sour because of my, my drinking and drugging? Was I trying to reignite a, a, rom a romance? He wanted me to be clear about why I was doing my amends, and it was simply to release myself from the obligation of uh, having to make that amend to the specific person. Now, the fifth factor I journaled about at my, under the guidance of my sponsor was how to make the amend. Now, as I said, he was old school, so he really thought face-to-face -face and eye-to-eye -eye was the way to do it. And I came to realize that that was, in fact, the best way to make an amend, but you can't always do that, so he was, you know, he told me that we, you know, a letter or a phone call or even FaceTime um, later in the game um, uh, was acceptable. But he always thought that the, the important thing that it was an honest and personal attempt to reach out to that person and, and let them know um, how you felt. Um, the question uh, uh, sometimes arises in the step is if making an amend can be harmful to either you or to the person the amend is being made to. And that was the sixth thing he wanted me to write down. You know, would this be harmful to the person? Was it someone to whom your presence was so toxic or traumatic that it just wasn't fair um, to confront them? Uh, so in that case, uh, he, he agreed that we could do that amend together, the two of us and my higher power. 
um, and speak honestly and, and thoroughly about the nature of the wrong and then move on. And sometimes making an amends can be dangerous to you. Um, you know, you could, be, you could owe an amends to someone who's using, who's drinking and drugging and, and someone you really can't you know, um, just walk up to and, and have a meeting with. In that case, uh, other methods were perfectly acceptable. And if, a, you know, he told me a story about uh, a, a man who said he wanted to make an amends to, to a person, and, and the man was told by his lawyer not to do that, that it would be put him in a certain amount of jeopardy that wasn't fair to him or his family. So there are many reasons why you might not make a direct amend, but there are the exceptions and not the rule. The seventh step he wanted me to take within the ninth step was he wanted me to write down how I was going to do it and then to make it and to make a declaration that I am going to make an amends to so and so for the following reasons. And that felt very liberating to me and I did it. The eighth thing after I made the amend was to examine the amend to write down what the experience was like and to ask myself did I make that amend with fearless honesty? And that was his phrase, fear, fearless honesty. But I've, I've held on to that phrase for a long time because that's really the heart of making an amend. Did you do it with the most honesty you could? And then the ninth thing that he wanted me to do was write down the person's name and check it off from the list. And that was incredibly fulfilling. I have found that the ninth step, which was the step I feared most when I came into the rooms, was the one that helped me the most. So I hope some of this advice uh, about journaling the ninth step um, can be of use to you.